right, man. Feels like we've been talking about this matchup for a long time. I'm, I'm sure it feels like that times 100 for you. Yeah. Are you sick of talking about, about Danny Sabatello, or, or is this um, – has this gotten to be fun leading into this? Um, I've been having fun the whole time, you know. Uh, I just feel like this is going to be the funnest part, you know. Uh, or no, I feel like most competitive part. Uh, this is going to be the most competitive part. I feel like the fight is not going to be very competitive. So uh, bring on all the trash talk because that's the more chips on the table <laughs> and I get the more things I get to throw in your face, you know, uh, when I beat the shit out of you. You've had, what, like nearly six months to, to know that it was him, right? Yeah. Obviously, you're not going to do a, a six-month actual right. training camp. Right. He's probably been in your mind one way or another. Yeah. Every day since since he won his last fight. So. Yeah. Uh, have you been in a situation like that before, and and have you gotten comfortable with it? Um, the closest I've been to uh, that is like being ranked, you know, while I was in wrestling, you know, and knowing like I'm gonna face somebody at the end of the year uh, that I have to face. Um, I'm I'm pretty cool with it, you know. Um, I just go about it like any other camp. Like, yeah, I gotta fight fight him at the end of the year, but this camp is still gonna be like an eight to nine week camp, and you know, I, I'll prepare just like like always. You know, I'll do all the extra things that I've always done. Um, I'm 18 and one for a reason. I've um, I've stood up to almost every challenge that's been presented to me, you know, and passed it with flying colors. So uh, I don't think this will be any different. One of the things that he's liked to say, I mean, he said it to us today. He said it in Chicago with you a couple of weeks ago. He said it prior to that is that he, he thinks he's in your head. Yeah. If he's not, it's, does that work to your advantage to let him keep thinking that, that, that he's up there? Yeah, I think it does. Uh, <laughs> I think it works to my advantage because he must not understand my head and, like, how I think, you know. Um, I feel like... I can turn on my viciousness, you know, turn it off and on, and um, I am, like, ready and willing, you know, uh, to put myself in a position to be very vicious this fight. Um, as far as, like, my day-to-day, -day, I got a lot of stuff going on, man. I got two kids at home, you know. I got a wife. I got, like, family and stuff, you know. So I don't feel like he's in my head as much as he thinks it is, but if, but if, but if, but if he thinks I am, maybe I'm in his head, and, you know, he don't got a lot to think about. He say he go to sleep and think about me, so... Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm definitely in his head. I asked him this too, but can you give us like your Cliff's Notes version of, of how this beef kind of started with him anyways? I mean, <clears throat> yeah. if it was up to you, would there be no beef with him? No, the no, that'd definitely be okay. beef. Before we even fought, you know, um, he was somebody, I just see the way he treats his people or the way he talks about people. And I kind of see him like talking about people that don't have a, uh, like they don't have wrestling. They don't have the means to like defend themselves, you know, and he's talking crass. He talked crass about Sergio, talked crass about a lot of people in the um, Bellator organization all, all, uh, across the world. And I don't I don't vibe with that. You know what I mean? So I've I've wanted I'm always always also been like the type of person that's um, if somebody's like the toughest guy in the room and they're like boasting about it, like I kind of just want to beat that guy up, you know, um, so I, I, I just don't like, you know, the way he carries himself. Uh, in that respect, uh, you know, the way he, you know, disrespects people, I just don't, I don't like. So you mean, do you consider him like a bully? I mean, is that I consider him, yeah, I, but yeah, I consider him a bully to some people, uh, you know. Um, but you don't, con you don't think that he's trying to bully you necessarily, or is he trying to bully? Yeah, you no, I, I think he, I think he thinks he can bully. You know, I think he thinks he can bully me, but that's like part of the allure of like fighting him. Like, oh, you don't know, I got a freaking pocket knife or I got something, you know, for you, you know what I mean? You're not like ready for it. So, um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Appreciate it, man, thank you. Ralph, yeah. out of the three other guys left, who's yeah. the toughest puzzle to figure out? Um, I figure, I figure, or Magomed Magomedov, uh, a puzzle that I figured out, but I feel like we'll be a tougher um, opponent the second time. I think he's the toughest puzzle to figure out. And do you, actually even care what type of a fight this winds up being if it's a stand-up or if you two this talking about this fight yeah. between sabatello yeah yeah no i don't care um i feel like i'm literally better than him everywhere um the only place he poses a threat is wrestling um and that's like that's an edge he probably maybe edges me in wrestling anywhere else i feel like i dominate him if we were to do a jiu-jitsu match if we were to do a striking match if we were to do a wrestling match uh he he might he I give him, he might win by a riding point or something. He might win, like, very, very seldom. 
to be honest, I feel like I beat the shit out of them, but just um, I like to give my opponent the, the benefit of the doubt. Like if I give him the benefit of the doubt, then I'll give him a point maybe. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I feel like I'm better than him everywhere. I don't know if you're going to really want to answer this one, but yeah, I don't care. In training camp, who's pushed you more to become a better fighter? Oh. Rufus or Eric Nixon? Um, I would definitely say uh, Rufus Sport pushed me more um, because they were like responsible for a lot of my growth. When I came to Eric Nixick, um, he was like tightening up a lot of things, you know. Um, or he, yeah, he he was he he wasn't tightening up the things. I, uh, I mean, he was uh, adding to the the base I already had, and I, I developed my base from Rufus Sport. I was a Rufus Sport fighter for seven years, you know. Um, I went to Eric Nixick's for a camp, you know, and he was able to mold or work with what he what he had. Um, but I, Rufus Sport did the blunt of the work, um, and I I always accredit Rufus Sport for my development and um, my foundation. Thanks. No oh, problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said you're having a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Your last post in IG was uh, some type of character saying a uh, human highlighter, some type of ostrich. Is yeah. Is a way of getting in his head, irking him, or? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's like, it's funny when I see <laughs> Well, I see funny. I say he looked like the character Sid off of Ice Age, you know, and it was funny because he did look like the character. Um, I think that too, that type of stuff like piss him off because I like you don't understand what's going on in my head. I think this shit is hilarious, you know, like, oh, you're going to bash my head. in. OK, you're going to bash my head. Who, when you ever bash my head in? I think it's hilarious, you know, so um, so I'm just making fun of him in that fact. Like he wants to be serious. But again, it's a facade from the way he actually fights and the way he actually like approaches uh, uh, fighting you know what I mean um, and that's why I feel like he feels he is a smart fighter because everything he does is an allu or illusion you know what I mean so yeah I think it's funny uh, Raphael, uh, obviously you guys both said that this has kind of gotten personal have you ever had yeah. a fight get this personal before? Um, not, not to this extent um, I fought Rob Emerson uh, once and he called he 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 said I was a, a a young dumb kid that wasn't ready for this or something. So we had a bunch of like words back and forth, but um, but but nothing to this extent. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised that you kind of complimented his wrestling when you're actually the more decorated wrestler. Yeah. And and Patchy and Magomed both said that like his skills not that good. <laughs> he gets all excited because he's talking. That his yeah. skills are overrated. Do you? I mean, do you yeah. agree with that? I agree with that. But okay, so I agree. And and don't get me wrong. I think I beat the shit out of him wrestling. But in my head, uh, for training purposes and for fighting purposes, I have to imagine um, the best version of him, right? Um, so the best version of him um, could be, be best. It's probably, in reality, the best version of him is not better than the worst version of me. But for training purposes, I can't, you know, go into training and, and, and be thinking like, oh, this guy freaking sucks. You know, I'm never, you know what I mean? I got to be thinking progression and how, how I can progress. I got to have somebody uh, across from me that will pose a threat. That's why I don't believe the fight will be very, um, very, very competitive. But, um... But I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt for his wrestling, the one thing he can do. Uh, you know, I know you don't want to look too far ahead to the next matchup, but obviously yeah. you keep getting asked about that. How yeah. hard is it to keep yourself to not look ahead to you know, two other killers on the other side? Man, uh, this one has kind of been easy because I'm looking so much, uh, looking forward to putting holes in this dude's face. So this is like pretty easy, you know what I mean, to like not, not think about um, uh, Magomed or, or Apache Mix. Um, so yeah, the, the talking. I, to be honest with you, I think the talking is, is gonna hurt Danny more than it's gonna help him. Like literally, it's gonna hurt him. So uh, yeah, I, I think the talking has helped with that. When the tournament first started, obviously all the guys were at it. Did you kind of expect it to be sitting where it is right now, the four guys, or or did one fight really surprise you? No, I didn't. I was hoping uh, Sabatolo made it to this point, but I didn't believe he would. I also didn't think Patchy Mix would be uh, Horiguchi though. So um, I, I thought it would be, I thought it would be Magomed, uh, Horiguchi, and um, it would be me versus uh, one of the, well, in the beginning of the tournament, I was supposed to fight Sergio, um, yeah. and then Juan Archuleta was, I think, in one of those spots or something. Um, but yeah, after the tournament changed, I thought it was going to be Horiguchi, uh, Magomed, and then me, and uh, I was hoping for, 
uh, Sabatello, but um, it was Higo. No, I know. Or I thought it was Higo. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. You and Sergio, obviously, you're the interim champion. He's yep. the official champion. Yep. You guys have trained together for a really long time. I know you kind of been training elsewhere now. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you leave because of that future matchup? No, so I left because I had a second child, my little fat baby, catch a coup. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had a second child, and I'm from Houston, so um, I was just... I, the plan was to just go to Houston um, to like live, and then when I had camps, um, I was gonna go back to Rufus Sport. Um, but then, uh, no, so I had a fight where I trained at Rufus Sport for uh, Magomedov, and then uh, then the, the next fight was uh, Sergio. So the next fight, I had to change camps, pretty much. I, I know one of the unwritten rules of MMA in the fighters are you don't talk about training. Yeah. But yeah. when you leave yeah. camp, it seems like, and we've seen many teammates that face each other, they do stop talking about training. Yeah. So, yeah. who got the better of the training? You were um, in the better of the training, I would say I beat this. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, to be honest with you, I learned a lot from Sergio, like a lot, you know, um, and uh, and majority of that was on my feet, you know, um, and so he got the better of me in the um, uh, the the exchanges on my feet, and then he learned a lot from me uh, wrestling wise, you know, so I, uh, uh, a majority of uh, wrestling, and I, so I would I would beat him in like the wrestling exchanges toward the end. It was like what and what. Like he would get some takedowns. He would control some positions. Um, I would light him up on the feet sometimes. Um, literally, it was back and forth. It was good rounds, you know. Um, and that's why I feel like he was like one of my best training partners. I think I posted uh, um, maybe when he was about to fight for the belt. It was we were still um, both like ranked high. I I posted like two of the best. Um, in the world, you know, I think two of the best of the Bellator, the best in the world. Like, I truly believe that because our rounds were uh, spectacular. They were like really back and forth. Um, and yeah, he really pushed me. So. Do you want to get into politics after that? Because that was a very good political answer. Oh, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Maybe sometimes, you know what I mean? I can do the Herschel Walker. <laughs> reporting, last in live, last <laughs> reporting in live, reporting in live, rank Danny Sabatella's trash talking ability from one to 10. Ah, I would, so, okay, I understand that his talking ability is different from my talking ability. I'm coming at him by stuff by his chin, his Buzz Lightyear chin, his hair lighter head, you know what I'm saying, him looking like Sid, you know, he's coming at me with, um, fuck you, uh, Rafion's a bitch, <laughs> Rafion's a bitch, you know what I mean? So, I feel like my trash talking is more diverse, uh, and it's more, uh, maybe fan friendly, um, I feel like his trash talking is shit, but uh, I'll rate it a. I'll I'll give him a six for conviction. He said uh, negative two when I asked. Ah, him. he got me negative two. I'll give him a six for conviction. The way he he commits to doing it, I'll, I'll give him a six, but it sucks. <laughs>